Alright everybody, welcome to my third of three videos on the Konica Minolta Maxim 7D. In the first video we talked about what everything was, in the second video we talked about how to use everything except the menu button. So that means in this video, we're going to go through the menus. All of them, and we're going to talk about what they all do. To navigate the menus, first thing we're going to do is we're going to push the menu button, and that brings up the menu system. We're going to use the cross pad to scroll through them. Up and down picks the items on the left, and then we push the right button to get into the specific setting that we want to adjust. When we've got the setting selected, we push OK and we go back to the left column to select the next one. Up at the very top, there are three tabs. We're going to call them men, uh, Camera Group, which is oh, over here. Playback. There are four tabs. I miscounted. Sorry. Camera, Playback, Settings, and configuration. We were in configuration originally. So you can see over here we're in configuration right now. To get into camera, we select the camera tab and select OK. And now that brings up the camera group and the three tabs in the camera group. So we're going to start here in camera group in camera group tab one. And we're going to jump right into image quality. This applies only to image to uh, JPEGs. So if you have it in raw you're not going to, to really be changing it. With JPEGs, you can have extra fine, fine, or standard. You can also have raw plus JPEG. If you have Windows 10 or later, all you need to do is raw because Windows 10 can thumbnail the raw images. There's no need to have the JPEGs as well. Color mode is going to be natural uh, sRGB, natural plus sRGB, or in uh, Embed Adobe RGB. Okay, unless you are super into the Adobe R uh, Adobe ecosystem, just use natural sRGB. It's going to give you the results that are closest and most uh, most reliable for color trueness. Digital FX allows you to modify the color parameters of your images. And we're going to enter, and you can adjust these things up and down. Your contrast, I forget what, saturation, sharpness, and hue. So these are the four parameters that you can increase or decrease as you see fit to uh, suit your image preferences. Hit menu to back out of this. Reset resets your camera group settings. Why this is here at the bottom of the first tab, I don't know, but we're just going to leave that alone. Camera group tab two, flash, uh, flash mode. There are a few different flash modes, fill, red eye, rear, rear sync, and wireless. Okay, fill flash is going to use the flash to bring in added light to fill in the shadows that are in your scene. Red eye is going to pulse the flash before you take the photo to shrink people's pupils and reduce red eye. Rear sync, what that's going to do is when we talked in the second video about the flash, you have the shutter curtain open and close. In normal flash mode, as soon as the first curtain starts its travel, flash, or I'm sorry, ends its travel rather, flash, and then the second curtain closes and reset. At 1 160th of a second, it doesn't matter, right? With rear sync, first curtain opens, and then if you have a 10 second exposure, then this, the flash triggers right as the rear second curtain is about to close. So like I said, at 1 160th, there's no difference. But if you have that long exposure, like 8 or 10 seconds, then having that rear sync can be really useful. If you want to have somebody on a bicycle riding through your scene, you have a light on them, but only enough to illuminate their reflectors, and then boom, flash right at the very end. And what's going to happen is you have that person on that bike illuminated with what looks like a couple of corkscrews of reflector light coming off of them. So that's a creative use for, for rear sync. And wireless allows wireless control of flashes. I have no... Konica Minolta flashes, so I'm not the person to ask about how that works because I've never used it. Flash control. Here are your choices. They are advanced dynamic integration, pre-flash TTL, and manual. Okay. ADI flash uses D-series lenses and the focus distance that they provide. They, the the D-series lenses provide focus distance information to the camera. 
to and, and it also fires a pre-flash before the actual image to calculate how much flash power is needed for a proper exposure. Very advanced and uh, good use of flash uh, calculation. Pre-flash TTL uses a pre-flash before the exposure to calculate the exposure required uh, and also with this you need to use a flash diffuser on your flash for this to work properly. So this is what you would want to use if you have a studio set up with things like umbrellas for instance. And then manual lets you control the flash power in full stop increments uh, that are displayed as fractions which uh, would mean that the full stop increment one, one stop under would be one half or one stop over would be two. For instance, that's what that, that means is displayed as fractions. Below that is bracketing setup, which I can't get into. Just a second, let me see if I can do that now. Nope, bracketing setup, it's... Oh, that's my manual power setup, that's why. There we go. Flash power ratio. F full power, half power, quarter, or sixteenth. So I guess you can only underclock it, you can't overclock it from here. So that's your manual flash control. Bracketing setup right here is going to be three images, a 0 0.3 EV for three frames, 0 0.3 for five frames, half a stop for three frames or half a stop for five frames. So basically do you want to have three frames that are separated by one-third of a stop under normal, one-third of a stop over, Three fra five frames that have that two-thirds, one-third normal, one-third, two-third. Half stop under normal, half stop over. Or half one stop under, half stop under normal, half over, ha full stop over. That's This is the setup for your bracketing. And this only takes effect when you have your bracketing up here. So if you pick five frames, you have to hit the shutter button five times in single bracketing. If you have select five frames and you're in continuous, you just hold the shutter button down for those five frames. Your flash bracketing setup right here allows you to do bracketing power with your flash in the same way. Flash, uh, this is your bracketing order, proper, under, over, under, over, proper, matter of personal preference, which one of these you want to have and how it's easier for you to find your images when you look through your camera roll on your computer. The third tab in the camera group, instant playback on two, five, or ten seconds after you take a photo. Do you want it to display on the screen? Matter of personal preference. Instant playback setup, if you select that, now do you have it ha show the uh, image only, the image and in info, or the image in the histogram? What information do you want to have s displayed when you have instant playback? Again, matter of personal preference. Noise reduction, on or off. In general, I recommend leaving this to off. This is an old camera, it's clocking in 20 years old. So the computer algorithms in it for noise reduction are not as good as they are in modern photo editing softwares, even free ones. Once you reduce noise, you're not going to get the detail back that's lost. So if you leave this off, you'll have more control over noise reduction in post on your computer. Then this is your interval shooting and you can start or stop your interval shooting Oops. and uh, set up, there's your setup inter for your intervals. So how long do you want to have between your intervals? Anywhere from 30 seconds to 60 minutes. Just like that, 30 seconds is as close as it gets. Your number of frames, anywhere from 2 to 240. And your start time, either at a specific time or when you press the shutter release. So that's it for the camera group. We're going to go next to the playback group. The playback group has, again, has two tabs, and we're going to go through these things and talk about what everything is. In the first tab, this is delete, and this will allow you to delete, uh, what's that, marked frames, so you can go into your camera roll, find marked frames, and delete them, or everything on the card. Format allows you to format the entire card if you would like. View folders allows you to view either a single folder or all of your folders. And that's when you play back. 
if you play back your, your folders, if you hit the playback button, is it only going to show what's in the current folder or all of them? Locking images, which I can't get to right now, allows you to lock images from deletion. Is that right? No. Single folder, there we go. Uh, so underneath single folder, then you can pick a specific folder to view. Which one of these do you want to look at? Lock images allows you to pre prevent images, individual images from being locked. You can go in, lock all in a single folder, everything on the card, unlock a folder or unlock a, the card, a, uh, or individual marked photos. And you can prevent images from being deleted either individually as a folder or your whole card. Index format, file browser, four frame, nine frame, or 16 frame. Do you want to, how, how do you want to have your images displayed? Anyway, that's only for how your folders are, your images are indexed when you look at your folders. Playback tab two is a slideshow. You can start a slideshow playback if you would like. Printer setup allows you to connect to a printer so that you can print from your camera. The next three all relate to your printer setup. Whether you not want to have your date imprinted when you print your images, whether you want to have an index print at the beginning of your print, and whether or not you want to cancel your print so you can stop printing. So, uh, have never connected a camera to a printer to print directly from it, so I'm not really sure how you would even go about doing that. We'll go over here next to the settings group, which has four tabs, and we're gonna start in tab one. So this first one is your autofocus priority. It says priority setup, but it's for autofocus. Focus or release. Is it more important to you that the image be in focus or that you have an image? It's dependent on what you're going to do. If you're taking corporate headshots, it's probably more important that it be in focus. If you're just taking photos for the newspaper where resolution's pretty low and there's a lot of forgiveness in uh, focus, you can probably have it on release. Focus hold button setup affects the way that the focus hold button on some lenses works. Not all lenses, and I don't have a single one like this, have a focus hold button. Does it hold focus or does it provide depth of field preview? Matter of personal preference and how you want to use your lenses. AFMF button is a toggle or a hold button. Now, as I showed you in the second video, I could toggle that. You could switch that to be a hold if you want, if you prefer this be a hold button over a toggle. For this, it's a matter of personal preference, how you want your camera to behave, which one you choose. Auto exposure lock button function. So as I showed you the auto exposure lock in the second video, this allows you to adjust how that functions. Hold, which means you have to hold the auto exposure lock button down for the exposure to be locked. Toggle, which means you push it once and you toggle exposure lock on, push it a second time and you toggle it off. Uh, auto exposure hold, this is ambient and flash. Uh, this is the ambient and flash setting. Al allows exposure value adjustment in the camera to account for both ambient light and flash power by adjusting the flash power. And then the bottom one, ambient only. Is that right? That doesn't seem right. So that must be ambient and flash holding and toggling. Interesting. There, that must have been an update in the firmware because I pulled this straight from the menu and what I'm seeing here doesn't align with what's in the, I'm sorry, I pulled this straight from the uh, camera manual. What I'm seeing in this menu doesn't align with what was in the camera manual. Autofocus with shutter. This isn't in here at all. Interesting. Uh, so this is probably your autofocus uh, turning on or off with your shutter button. So if you wanted to use your AF-MF button as an autofocus on button, you could then disable autofocus with your shutter if you would want to. And this last one is auto autofocus setup. And uh, this is with your auto autofocus, you either get automatic autofocus or dyna dynamic manual focus. DMF allows you to use the manual focus ring on your camera after achieving autofocus to override autofocus if you would like to. Matter of personal preference and how you want your camera to work here. This is now going to be tab two in the settings group. And the first one is going to be 
control dial setting. And this is basically how do you want your control dials to operate. For, um, shutter speed on the front, shutter speed on the front, aperture on the back. Aperture on the front, shutter speed on the back. Matter of personal preference, I like the shutter speed on the back because this dial is closer to the shutter. And I like the aperture on the front because this dial is closer to the aperture. It's just easier to remember. I've got all my cameras set up that way, I think. Um, so, but however you want to use it, it's not important which one of these two settings you want. What is important is that you're consistent so your cameras behave in the same manner. Exposure compensation, off, front, or rear dial. This allows you to use the front or rear dial for exposure compensation, or none of them, and just use the exposure compensation dial. Uh, if you are, let's say you're shooting exclusively in shutter priority program or aperture priority mode, you could dedicate one of your dials to exposure compensation. If you're shooting in manual, that's not going to be such a great idea. The control dial lock, on or off, prevents the exposure value from changing except when either the autofocus or exposure system is active. Now what this means is that if you turn this to on, in conjunction with exposure compensation being done with the dial, if you have this set to let's say your back dial and you're carrying this around on your shoulder, you could accidentally have this rotate which would adjust your EV compensation without you knowing it just because it's brushing up against your hip or something. This locks that so this can brush up against your hip all day long and and you it'll it won't change your ev unless the autofocus or metering system are on which would indicate that you are going to take a photo so this is a good idea if you do want to use your your command wheels for exposure compensation exposure compensation setting is ambient and flash or ambient only do you want exposure compensation to take into account the amount of light coming out of your flash or only what's available in the scene. Matter of personal preference and also if you never use a flash it doesn't matter. If you do use a flash it might be a good idea to have it be ambient and flash. The AF illuminator is on or off. Do you want your camera to tell you in your viewfinder what your AF point is and which one is being used? Matter of personal preference and the information you want to see in your viewfinder. Settings group tab 3, shutter lock, off or on. This prevents the shutter from opening when there's no mount lens attached. So on, if you don't have a lens, the shutter won't fire. Off, if you don't have a lens, the shutter will fire. Autofocus illumination dis uh, display time. When we saw that auto in the previous tab group, that autofocus illumination point on or off, this is how long that AF point will stay illuminated for when it's on. It's just a matter of personal preference how long you would like to have it stay on. Monitor display, manual or automatic. Manual means you decide when the monitor is on. Auto automatic means that the eye sensors will turn the display off. There we go, just like that. So it's a matter of personal preference and how you want your camera to behave. Record display, auto rotate or horizontal. Basically when uh, this has to do with, re with when you're shooting, whether you're going to have your, uh, your camera record if you had the camera rotated for portrait or orientation or not. Uh, the auto stabilization finder display here shows an auto stabilization scale on the right side of the viewfinder when active. So basically, this will help you look look in the viewfinder to see whether or not auto stabilization is active and how much auto stabilization is going on when you have this turned on. Settings group tab 4, ISO button. What do you want to have your ISO button do? Control the ISO or control zone matching? Matter of personal preference, I tend to think that controlling ISO with the ISO button is easy to remember. ISO mode setup gives you, do you want to go 100 to 1600 or 100 to 3200 ISO with your camera? Matter of personal preference and how much noise you want to have in your image, which one of these two settings you go with. M set button function, set memory or take you to the menu. Do you, need the, do you want this to set the memory? If you're never going to use the memory functions, I won't lie, I've never used those memory functions on a single camera. 
why not just have it be another button to take you to the menu? Matter of personal preference there and how you use your camera. Custom reset will reset all of the custom settings we just did. And the last one is the configuration group right here, which is our wrench. There are three tabs in the configuration group. This first one is LCD brightness. How bright do you want your LCD to be? I have it jacked all the way up right now because it makes it a little bit easier for recording. But if you're in, this is good for outside. If you're indoors, you probably want that on low. Transfer mode only applies when you're connected to a computer via a USB port. Do you want to sort your, uh, do you want to have date storage, peer-to-peer, -peer, or uh, recommend uh, remote storage? Honestly, uh, this has a pretty slow USB port in it by today's standards. I don't need, I, I don't connect cameras to computers, just period, end of story. It doesn't happen. When I transfer files, it's from the memory card to the computer directly. It's way faster. Uh, that's what I recommend for this one. This should not matter at all because really you should take the CF card out of the camera and put it into a CF card reader for your computer and you'll be much happier. Video output is either NTSC or PAL. When you're using video output with your, with your camera to connect it to a TV, you're not going to be able to record video with this camera. Is it going to send the signal in NTSC or PAL? Audio signal. Do you want to have an audio signal from your camera on or off when you do video out? Language, what language are you going to have your menu system be in? You have, what, eight choices? English, German, French, and a few others. Date and time setup allows you to set your date, time, and time zone here, and the format as well. So uh, you can get that set up so that your exit data are accurate. Config group tab two. We're going to start off with file number memory on or off. Do you want your file numbering to reset every time you have a new folder? It is much easier to overwrite files accidentally with this set to off. I recommend setting this to on because your file numbering won't reset until you hit 9999, and the odds of putting 10,000 files into a single folder are low. But if you take this camera out every day for a week and you shoot 10 files, and you have uh, 10 photos, 10 to 12 photos, and you have a different photo from every day of the week that's numbered one through seven, and they keep overwriting when you try to copy them to your computer, that's a bit frustrating. Because then you have to go in and change all the file names yourself, or come up with a different folder strategy. Folder naming, you can either have it be date form or standard form. Date form is just a format for where the, the folder name is the date that the images were taken. So matter of personal preference and how you want to have your folders look. If we do standard form, we get this option to select that format and then you can change the format, the file folder name down there. And then new folder allows you to create a new folder so that you can start putting files into that folder. And then config group tab three, and this is the end. Is this really the end? Yeah, it is. The last tab in the menu system, LCD backlight, 10 seconds. Well, you can set it up to one minute. How long is the LCD screen going to be on after you're done looking at it? 10 seconds is why this camera kept turning off throughout these last three videos. Should have done this at the very beginning. <laughs> anyway, you can leave it on for up to a minute or as short as five seconds if you would like. Power save, ten, anywhere from one minute to 30 minutes. This is how long until the camera automatically turns off when you do nothing, and this is simply a matter of battery preservation. In general, this camera is pretty battery efficient, so you can let this go a little bit longer and you probably will be okay. Menu memory, on or off. If you set this to on, the camera will remember which menu screen you were in last time you were here and take you right back there. So if you have a menu item that you go to often, you can leave this to on and get there in less time. Delete confirm default position, yes or no. When you're in play and then you go to delete a, a, fi a file, do you want your de delete default to be your first choice being no or yes? So the difference is if you, you're in playback, you hit delete and you're on no and you click OK, the file will not be deleted, which is great if you accidentally hit delete on a file you wanted to keep. If it's yes, you hit delete, and then you hit OK, your file will be deleted automatically. And uh, that's really bad 
if you accidentally select a delete for a photo you wanted to keep. I always recommend keeping this on no because it makes you go through an extra step to confirm file deletion, which is a really good preventative measure so that you don't accidentally delete an important photo. Clean CCD allows you to lift up the shutter and mirror so that you can access the CCD with a brush and clean it. And then reset conf uh, default takes all of the tabs in this group and resets them to their default factory settings. And with that, we have gone over every single thing about the Minolta Maxim 7D, a, a vintage 20-year-old camera that quite honestly, in terms of build quality and, and some of its capabilities, really still holds up today. This was overbuilt. I'm not, I can't think of too many other 20-year-old digital cameras that are, have lasted quite as well as this one has. So I do want to say a very hearty thank you to Greg for sending me this to borrow for a well, now about six weeks and make these videos with. It has uh, been a camera I would not otherwise have had, and I greatly appreciate Greg's uh, willingness to let me borrow his 7D. Thank you very much, Greg. And with that, thank you everybody for watching, and I will see you in the next camera review manuals.